Hello everyone, it's Thomas Jujibi, and welcome to my review of Lupin Ranger vs. Paddle Ranger vs. Q Ranger, the three-way vs. movie that features three seasons that had been over for a very long time when it was released, yet they still chose to make it and made no connection to the currently airing season. Not sure why they chose to make it that way, but hey, whatever, I, I personally had fun with this movie, and now I'm here to go over my thoughts with it. Before I get to it though, please consider checking out some of my videos on Q Ranger and Lupin vs. Paddle after you finish watching this video as I've actually made quite a decent amount of content for LVP, not really much of notable interest for Q Rangers since that was kind of when I was figuring things out with this whole YouTube thing, so hey, check those out if you want to see kind of the early stages of the channel. Hello everyone, it's Thomas Jujubi. I just saw the finale of Q Ranger, and I'm here to give my thoughts on the entire series. I'll leave a link to both playlists for the seasons in the description. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure there's something you'll end up liking in one of those. And also, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on tokusatsu or other stuff in general, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Discord. I'm pretty active on both of those social media places as well, if you want to hear more of my thoughts. But now, let's get into my thoughts on Lupin Ranger vs. Paddle Ranger vs. Q Ranger. So, just to kind of get my overall feelings on this movie out of the way first, I thought the movie was pretty average. I don't really hate the movie or anything in the movie that much, but there's also not really anything in the movie that I really love or that particularly stands out to me. To be honest, I'm not sure why that is since I actually enjoy both of these character casts. Q-Ranger, I have said, is my favorite Sentai, but I haven't really seen that much Sentai, so I'm not really too passionate about that. And Lupin Ranger, why? While I don't love that season at all, again, that's actually my least favorite season, but again, I haven't really seen much Sentai. I do enjoy that cast, but I just feel like the character dynamics in this movie could have been handled a lot better. I want to say they're not handled well, I just feel like they could have done more with the dynamics. Granted, as they actually say in the movie, we're actually dealing with pretty much a 20-person cast and then some. But I feel like the Q Rangers specifically in this movie got like totally swept under the rug when it comes to their interactions in the movie. Lucky and Tsurugi as the Reds obviously get the most focus, which makes sense. I'm not going to argue they shouldn't have done that. And I appreciate that we bring back the idea of the BN Thieves as a connection to the Lupin Rangers. That's something I wouldn't have initially thought of, and I like that they decided to play that up in this movie. But then we have Hammy, Spada, and Stinger kind of act as more or less comic relief for like a bit of the movie before they just kind of fade into the background. I think Hammy has like one standout moment where she says they do have a red and a blue on the Q Rangers, and then Kyrie asks if they're crayons. I thought that was really fun. But then, like, most of the Q Rangers don't appear until the end of the movie. <laughs> like, in this team of of 12 rangers six of them don't actually appear until the end of the movie so half this team is not in the movie until the end why <laughs> and like what makes this worse for me is that after they actually appear and we have the full team like all of these characters together we have so many fun interactions like the fight scene at the end is amazing visually because i think both of these teams are very strong q ranger i will definitively say is probably my second favorite sentai aesthetic ever but like but the the way the characters talk to each other and the, just the quick things they say to each other is so much fun. The part that really stands out to me is when Noel transforms from Patronex to Lupinex and Ryu Commander is just staring at him like, what the fuck happened here? What, what is going on? He's so confused. And I love it. And then we also have the all girls fight scene going on, which was a nice, fun little comedic break. And I thought that was pretty fun as well. And then we have an excellent use of good, cool Kaiser VSX's different cockpits, where we sort of sprinkle the Q Rangers into different spots where the most shenanigans would happen. And it's amazing. I love the way to interact with the Lupin Rangers and the Paddle Rangers, and even with each other. Once again, the commander creates one of my favorite parts where he's trying to boss everyone around and Raptor has to stop him from going crazy. She even says, like, why are you trying to boss him around? You're not in charge of them. The commander is great. I just really like Ryu Commander and he's only in this movie for like 20 minutes and only has 20 lines of dialogue. Why? <laughs> Why would we do this? There was so much potential for these character interactions in my opinion, but for some reason there was a need to cut down on this so that for the most part the Q Rangers are just extra firepower at the end. And another place where I feel this being really apparent is the beginning of the movie, which that, that whole thing kind of feels out of place to me. It feels really weird that they decided to make the whole movie's plot jump-started by pretty much a one-off character in Q-Ranger as Hoshi Minado? Who? Why? <laughs> 
Like, they have him start this movie with his dumb guitar instead of, like, an actual Q-Ranger. And especially because we have Balance and Naga act as such prominent characters in this beginning section and we bring back that fun idea of them being thieves in the original season. I think it would have made much more sense to make this stupid guitar, which does basically nothing, if you make that a piece of the Lupin collection and then you have both set of thieves begin the movie just trying to get it. And that's how they meet each other. We don't need Gold Magic yellow buster to cameo again that's that's probably the only reason he's cameoing in this movie because he was two other rangers in very popular seasons and like his cameo in q ranger was fine that was fun but why is he in this movie <laughs> why do we bring him back and along with that if you make the guitar a piece of the looping collection i think that also gives a great reason to combine this movie's gangler and don arkage now don arkage as an idea as a villain i think it's, it's a great idea for a postseason q ranger villain because it's basically the same thing as the original villain so you really get to bring back the massive stakes of q ranger like you really feel like you know we could have dark matter retake the entire universe because i mean their big boss is literally back just in a different form he's not as full power of course but you know same idea and then instead of making him a villain for a good chunk of the movie instead we just have this lackey gangler that really doesn't do anything at all like his addition in this movie really just felt like someone on the staff said hey we need to add a Lupin versus Pato villain, a gangler, because it's a crossover, and, um, that that's that's it <laughs> he does nothing even in the end of the movie don arkage when he gets his full power back he just revives the key ranger generals for bosses to fight instead of you know the guy that was another main villain in this movie okay <laughs> if we combine these two as a single character in my opinion basically just making don arkage a gangler of some kind he could just be a gangler from the other universe uh, the key ranger universe specifically i think that would kind of be a fun idea just to show there are always going to be these ganglers not much will really change and then you have the hyper planigium accessed by this new loop and collection piece or just even say it's just a super powerful loop and collection piece because it's from the q ranger universe and loop and collection needs to be in this world something like that then i think we could really get to bring in some more fun crossover elements Another interesting thing the Gangler did that is kind of mixed for me is that he gives the Lupin Rangers their the ability to transform into Paddle Rangers. Obviously not explicitly, but like, you know, he's the reason that whole fight scene happens. Now, actually, before I get into the fight scene itself, I do love the interactions with Noel and Kogure by basically pretending like the Paddle Rangers need to give up their Lupin collection pieces to save Kairi, Umika, and Toma because, you know, they're kidnapped, supposedly. I, I just kind of felt like that felt like an episode straight out of Lupin Ranger versus Paddle Ranger itself. I think it maybe didn't need to be in this movie because I kind of would have just liked to see the idea play itself out in the actual show because it actually was a lot of fun, I felt. As I said, specifically the Noel Kogura interactions, that was a lot of fun. I like that. Just the look they gave each other when I guess they assumed it was Kyrie on the phone saying they need the Lupin collection items. The look they gave each other, like, oh, this is how we get the Lupin collection back from the cops. That was a lot of fun. Although, now that I think about it, Noel gave the cops the Lupin collection pieces, so why would he be excited about taking it back? Oh, well, oops. <laughs> Now, anyway, back to the actual Lupin Rangers transforming into Paddle Rangers. It's a, I quite like the idea. It's another fun idea that you really would only get with a versus Sentai. Sentai turning into, like, the same version, but obviously different. And it, it doesn't really do anything, though. Like, it's just fan service in this movie. And if anything, it's only half a fan service because I would want the Paddle Rangers to turn into the Lupin Rangers as a counterpart to this as well. Is that just me? Did, did people just want to see only the Lupin Rangers use? the other team's gear because I want to see the Paddle Rangers become Lupin Rangers as well, right? <laughs> I don't know why they didn't think of doing that. There there was a fun line, though, about how the Paddle Ranger suits are built more for defense instead of mobility, and I, that would just make me want to see the dynamic crossover with the other three main characters of this show as well, even more. I don't know why they didn't do that. They, they, that could have been a selling point of this movie, but alas, it's only a few minutes of a fight scene set for basically no reason, and, uh, and to be fair, it was basically a selling point of the movie so i guess they got their worth out of it anyway i do find it interesting that i actually did that because the movie seems more paddle ranger focused which is funny because everyone always complains about the season that starts with the words lupin ranger being more lupin ranger focused and yet the main character arc that happens in this movie takes place between patra and ichigo and lucky as the, le the leader of the q rangers and arguably the main character of the q rangers i quite like the story arc between the two though not to say that i didn't like it lucky and keichiro are such 
contrasting characters, and I love seeing the way their personalities bounce off of each other and how they learn from each other by the end of this whole thing. It's quite satisfying to watch, and it's one of my favorite character interactions between the casts, if not just for the fact that I like the other Key Rangers better. Especially the fun line where Lucky says he's trying to uh, find Don Arcage, who's a body double for Don Aramage, and Keitaro specifically says, no, that's just an anagram for Armageddon, which is what Don Armage's name is supposed to be. So that was a fun fourth wall breaking thingy doodle that I like to see in movies. Oh, and I also do like that the movie kind of solidifies the growth Lucky had throughout his own season, where we don't have him break out of jail because he respects Earth's laws. Not to say that he broke out of jail in his own season, but just, yeah, I like that whole moment with him. I like everything with Lucky in this movie. And, um, I think with that, I've pretty much covered everything that happened in this movie. Where the hell did you come from? So yeah, Joe of the World is in this movie, and I, I really want to like it, honestly, but he's thrown in so haphazardly. Like, basically, he appears, changes with all the other characters, he even gets a roll call with him. Like, he's not just, bam, he's here, he morphs, that's it. He gets a roll call with the other characters, He, he he's even there to fill out the rank, so there's actually 20 Sentai heroes here, which is kind of fun. They build him up, like he's actually going to do something in this fight, at least, but then he does his instinct awaken, and then he... He leaves. That's it. <laughs> like, what? I have absolutely, like, as I just said, I would have absolutely no problem with him taking a part in the fight scene since his suit's pretty cool. And as he even says in the movie, his team didn't get their own postseason crossover. So it would be just a fun idea. Like, you know, we'll just throw one character in here and that will count as the crossover. But after he morphs, he just leaves without any of the other characters. Like, why? And then he just appears at the end. Like, where the hell did you go, dude? Did you morph, leave? And then just, what the hell? I'll come back. Why not? <laughs> like, what? Basically, they went through the trouble of making the world here feel like it was actually going to do something in this final fight and then they don't. It's kind of like the Lubin Rangers turning into the Paddle Rangers, to be honest. They tried something cool and interesting, but they didn't go all the way, and as a result, we get something that feels empty and out of place. And that's basically all my feelings with this movie, actually. There, there are a lot of good parts in it, but there's also some things in it that feel really too out of place or just don't really work well, if at all. So, I enjoyed the movie, I had a fun time with it, but I don't think it was anything amazing. Of course, be sure to let me know your own thoughts on this movie down in the the comment section and also check out some of those different Lupin vs. Pado and Q-Ranger videos or any other Super Sentai videos I have on the channel. And if you enjoyed this video or any of the others I mentioned, please consider hitting the subscribe button and I hope to see you next time.